New questions from Asha. Okay, how does the magic works? And another question is connected with the same is what is the difference between black magic and white magic? Understand one thing very clearly that there is no such thing which is called magic. Okay, there is no such thing which is called magic. Only thing is some things which you don't understand how they are done, you think this is a magic. Actually, there is no magic. There is only science. Some is spiritual science and some is materialistic science. But if you know how does it happens, you and you think it's not a magic. But when you don't know how does it happens, then you understand that it is magic. I give you one example. Like I suppose there is a building. Okay, so in that building, I am sitting in the ground floor or like in the first floor with my few friends and you are on the roof of that building and it's multi-story like seven stories or eight story building and you are on the roof and you watch because from the roof you can see that some of our known person is going to come or he is coming from somewhere far you can see him so you come down and you sit with us and you say that like soon our one of the friend will arrive and suddenly after like 10-15 uh, minutes that friends arrives so those people who didn't knew that you are you was on the roof they will understand this as a magic wow you have ability to see the future but those people who know how that you was on the roof and you might have been seen this then definitely it is not a magic for them same way all magics are there same way all science is there and there is no black magic and there is no white magic because science cannot be black there is some science which you don't like to accept like you know this uh, quran and bible people they long time did not accepted that the earth is moving they were saying that earth is not moving earth is fixed sun is moving around the earth and they believed it for long 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 time and they even burned some scientist who said that no it is not the earth uh, it's not the sun who is revolving around the earth it is earth which is revolving around the sun so this is like science is just the science it cannot be good it cannot be bad it is just pure energy science means it's energy it's like an ability to know how understand science can know only answers for how science cannot give you answer why science cannot give you answer why science can give you only the answers for how and why is as an assumption it's you are calculating you are thinking it is why you but science can not say why but science can say how huh? so how your food is digested science can explain you but why your food is digested this you are assuming on the basis of how but actually science cannot give you the answer of why Science can give you answer of only how. We can say that H2 has been formed like two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. They collide together in the presence of electricity and uh, in the presence of current, then it becomes to the water. But actually, they explain how the water becomes, but they did not explain. They have no answers why. They Now, the human mind assume on this maybe the human needed water that's why this uh, water was required but human just born some million years ago before that there was no human and before that there was even no animals and before that even there was no plants and before that there was no even watery animals and before that also water existed so water was not created for humans water was not created for animals water was not created for uh, plants but water was created so science could explain how water is created but why water is created science alone cannot explain and spiritual science can explain why but it's very hard for spiritual science to explain how and because of this miscommunication between the both the science most of things of spiritual science looks magic for us like there was a yogi I say there was like uh, four people I love who born in last uh, 
100 years or maybe 150 years. One is, among them is Ramanna Maharshi. Ramanna Maharshi was like a best sage who is born in the last 150 years. There was nobody equal to him on the sage's life, like how simple he lives, how simply he tried to take this knowledge, how simply he tried to share his knowledge, his wisdom. If you would try to listen to Ramanna Maharshi, you will run away. You don't have to listen to Ramanna Maharshi, you have to live with him. Then only the knowledge will go inside you. If you will try to analyze him, what he is saying, you will feel like often he is speaking like a five year old boy or like a 10 year old boy. No, not so much wisdom is coming out of him. But his every action what he performed in his life is full of wisdom, full of wisdom. So when you are living with such a personality, you are taking the jnana from that personality. You are taking the knowledge from that personality. So Ramanna Maharshi was one of the greatest sage born in last 150 years. So second was uh, Osho. He was one of the greatest speaker born in last 150 years. Some people say Vivekananda, but I do not agree with that because I do have uh, listened to Vivekananda, his speech also, and I have listened to Osho's speech also. Osho was 100 times more strong speaker than Vivekananda. Vivekananda was quite confused on many subjects. I do not say that Vivekananda was having less knowledge than Osho. What I am saying, I am talking only about the speaking skill, about the speech. So about the mastering of speech and Osho was a master of speech. He could give, he could speak on anything. Anything you give him, he can speak on anything and you will start to believe on his words even if they are 100% lie. That is the quality of a speaker that he can make you believe what he speak and he was the one of the greatest speaker born in last 150 years who could understand the human psychology these are two the third one is the best yogi in 150 year was swami ram swami ram was the greatest yogi born in 150 years who has done yogic practices when Swami Ram was alive, he used to go to the Europe and go to different hospitals and he used to ask the doctors, what is your criteria? What, how do you declare a person dead? So doctor used to say that the pulse should stop, the heartbeat should stop and the temperature should fall by this and every everything what he says, Swami Ram says, okay, I lie down here, I give you all what you need, give me a certificate that I am dead. because." He was traveling with one of his companion and he lie down on the table. He lie down on the table, his breath stopped, his heartbeat stopped, his pulse gone, temperature fallen. Everything what is required to calculate as a dead body, the doctors, the assistant asked the doctors, is he dead? They say clinically, biologically, yes, he is dead. And when they say that he is dead, he just release the breath, he wake up and stand and ask, okay, give me the death certificate. Nobody could give, but he was doing this in many countries. He did it in Germany, he did it in France, he did it in England, he did it in America, he did it in many countries. So he was the greatest yogi. He had like a complete control on his breath. There was a experiment made by him that um, in his presence, he did this in the presence of 20 scientists. There was a, a magnetic field free isolated a room created specially. There was a wooden table, there was no metal in this, house, in this room and there was a iron pin kept on the center of the table. Everybody was sitting in a round, Swami Ram was also sitting on a round and Swami Ram moved this pin three times by seven degrees without touching the pin, just sitting like two to three meters apart from it. So he is like one of the greatest, one of the greatest, uh, how to say, he was the greatest yogi in the last 150 years, who has really mastered the breath, who has really mastered the yogic science. 
is not like uh, just giving a lecture on yoga and not doing anything on this that's what i said like yogi has a power you know it's not a joke yogi is not a joke yogi is a power so swami ram was one of the greatest yogi born in 150 years and i will say like mm, mother teresa was one of the greatest social worker born in last 150 years she has sacrificed all her life all her life for totally for others happy person not happy person that i am not talking i am talking about the greatest social worker these four people are like very very like tremendous in their field they did a great job but there was one more guy who was born there and one more person who was born in 150 years and we cannot understand him now that is that is jiddu krishna murthy he what he spoke is like will take again some people have even said like it takes 2000 it will take more 2000 years to understand it like uh, it's taking 2000 years what buddha had said and it's taking 2000 years almost to for us now to understand what buddha was saying that time maybe people would have not understood it so same way the jiddu krishna murthy what he was speaking will take 2500 years more to understand he has spoken the science so i had i totally understand him from where he is speaking maybe uh, he was explaining the scientist in one of his interview and like scientist was saying like how you know it and he says i just know and i totally agree with him because some things are there i just know i just know some things and if you will ask me how i know i cannot prove it but i know like one of the question today asked is about the pyramids i know this is made by humans and i know this is made by tantrics and i know this is been lifted by human hands there is still no machines available in the whole world who can lift even today the stones of pyramid and keep on top in such a way like they have been created but it was possible with the human will in tantra there is a way when all people unite together connect to the synchronize together in a loop and then this loop they just touch only one finger they touch one finger and move they can lift by one finger any heavy amount of weight so they was touching and they was lifting it it is possible when swami ram came move a pin in 21st century without touching it imagine the people how they was come in their brain 6000 years ago it was not a difficult thing it was not at all a difficult thing so pyramid was created by tantric peoples the egypt was a fully tantric place the turkey was fully tantric place still there are some alive uh, shivlingam in turkey still there are some alive shivlingam in alexandria in cairo in south africa in chile in brazil a live shivlinga which i have been seen myself so these was the tantric lens and there was the experiment was made by the tantrics and that's how they created this pyramids to go away pyramids are the door how to connect to different world in the same place pyramids if properly can be used you can enter into the different dimension with your physical body you can enter into different dimension and that's why the pharaohs was buried under the pyramids so they they go physically in the different dimension even in list latestly in the west there was a one scientist i forgot his name he was uh, making a research around the pyramid he has written even a book on pyramid so he was walking around the pyramid and suddenly he disappeared he appeared after 30 days for others it was like 3 hours for him it was like for him it was 3 hours for other it was 30 days so they have very strong energies and they are created in such a way if you know the science how to use a pyramid you can travel between different worlds that's why there are so many pyramids and before there was more pyramids 
but the people long long time ago this pyramids was absolutely white absolutely white some pyramid was even covered by gold fully covered by gold because they are used for channelizing those energies with the connection with the different world with different dimensions how i know it i cannot explain i know at least for khajuraho i can explain but there i just know i cannot explain how i know how people when people was lifting them by fingers and putting on one upon the another it was not created by african slaves as the history is saying i'm sorry pyramids was not created by some king by african slaves they was not african slaves they were shamans african shamans who created the pyramid the story is not like it has been told that pharaoh was a evil person tutankhamun was a evil person they was like shaitan because most of your story is written by those people on in whose root is christianity that's why everything other than christianity becomes evil for them everybody other than them is doing exploitation and they are doing the real charity pyramids was created by the real tantric shamans of africa it was not created by slaves even millions of slaves will cannot move one stone from one place to another there is no technology till today and as they say the elephant was moving it it is impossible see the size of them even if you need four you need four elephant to move one stone it's not so easy so this is this is a different science from different dimension how it's there it's it's hard to understand that's why it appears like a magic so jitu krishna murti also was having this science and he was talking about this that in that planet this is there this is there and when they asked him they said like yes i don't know i don't know how i know i just know and uh, then and uh, that's why i'm saying what jiddu krishna murti has mostly said it will take more like not 2500 years but for sure at least 200 years to 500 years it will take for him to understand totally everything what he has said because until the science will not make a research and not manually send human into the space and will start to live in the space these things what he talked about is hard to understand it won't be a reality it is just a, some kind of fantasy in the head so this is important to understand that there is no black magic there is no white magic something which we are afraid and we don't know we call it black magic something which we do not afraid and we know we call it white magic electricity is black or white hmm electricity is demon or god hmm what is electricity it is good or bad if you touch it in a wrong place use it in a wrong way it can kill you if you use it in a right way it can run your fan ac your gas stove it can cook food for you it can warm water for you it can save you from cold it can save you from hotness it can save you from everything so electricity is not black not white it is just it is so same way magic means spiritual science and spiritual science is not good or not bad it is it is the aeroplane is not a weapon a human who is driving the aeroplane is a weapon you see aeroplane was built it for what to for weapons no aeroplane was built it this human can travel from one distance to another distance but if in this aeroplane some human come who is not having the who is having different mood he can take this aeroplane and hit to the twin tower and then 
it becomes a weapon most destructive weapon so energy is not good science is not good not bad energy is not good not bad it is just existing the person who is using it will decide for what he want to use same knife you can cut your vegetable same knife you can kill somebody okay so don't go into the magics of black and white there is no black and white magic i am sorry but need to understand that anything which is how does it work magic if you are thinking like if somebody is doing something on something it's very simple you know there is two reasons to make it work one is psychological and one is metaphysical psychological reason is that if somebody says to you that he has done something on you then even if he has not done by psychology you will start to feel bad and weak and have start to have fear and because of this you will become every day low 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 but the metaphysical metaphysical means something which is working on your astral body not directly on your physical body so something which is working on your astral body yes by magic it is possible to heal your astral body by magic it is possible to destroy or to make your astral body sick it will still dependent on the person who is doing a black or white magic on you and a person who is receiving it if the receiver's energy is high if receiver's frequency is higher than the doer frequency then it will not work understand like if the receiver on which the person is doing doer is doing black magic if his energy is higher than the energy of a doer then this doer cannot do anything wrong anything black magic on the person but same time he also cannot do anything white also on this that's why when you go to some people they say they ask him on whom you want to do and then they will ask what he does how much he worship who is spiritual who is his spiritual master they ask you everything details then only they are ready to do otherwise it can turn back to them also it is uh, like a weapon self destructive weapon if you don't know how to use if don't know how to prepare it can destroy you so magic works on a astral body but when it comes to your astral body the first thing starts is like a headache first thing starts is headache you start to feel headache and anxiety headache only headache will not be a black magic headache with anxiety can be a black magic black magic means something somebody wants to give and supply some negative energy to you whenever you have such thing one of the best easiest solution is like take vitamin c take lemon water take lemon or just take a lemon and move around your head seven times and just cut it and throw it any any square any crossroad you just can throw 